What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Storytime with Uncle Reddit. My name's John, and this is r slash malicious compliance. Man, look at my eyes. They've been watering like crazy for about a week now. I keep rubbing at them and making them raw, and it looks like I've been watching Old Yeller or something. Uh? I don't remember a year when I've had allergies this bad on top of a cold and everything else, but... Anyway, hopefully you can deal with my nasally voice and uh, get through these stories. All right, let's get started. Copywriter will have a hard time finding a job with that resume. Many years ago, I worked at Kinko's, now FedEx office. I often worked graveyard shifts and had to deal with lots of people early in the morning who hadn't had their coffee yet. For some context, overnight was the time when long machine runs were printed and tedious finishing work was done. Being the only one working until 6 a.m. when the morning crew started to trickle in, I was often in the middle of something when the customer came in, and it would take me a second to get to the counter to help them. One morning around 5 a.m., I'm in the back doing some binding work. I hear the door alarm and had just put a perfect binding in the heater. This takes about 15 to 20 seconds to melt the glue and bind the pages. I yell from the back, I'll be right out. Bitchy customer yells back, I'm in a hurry. I finish the binding and get up to the counter. Me. Sorry about the wait. What can I do for you? Bitchy customer. Can I see your resume paper selection? Our resume papers were literally sitting six inches away from her on the counter in a little bound book that had resume paper printed in big bold letters. I slide the book over in front of her and open it up. As she flips through it, she proceeds to complain about the color and texture of every paper before asking me the price. Me. 15 cents per copy plus 7 cents if you want to print on the second side. Bitchy customer. That's expensive. Don't you have any better paper for that price? Me. Sorry, that's our full selection of resume papers. The only other options are plain white copy paper, Astro Brights, neon colored, or cardstock. Are you going to need this double-sided or single-sided? I could see that she had in front of her a two-page resume, which usually printed single-sided. Bitchy customer. Which one is cheaper? Me. Double-sided will be cheaper, but for resumes, our customers usually prefer single-sided. Bitchy customer. Just give me 50 copies double-sided on the sandstone. I confirmed her selection and head back to the copier to complete her order. I print out a proof, and as a matter of quality assurance, I give it a once-over to confirm we're not getting any fuser marks, random spots, streets, etc. I noticed that her job title on her most recent job was something like copy weeder. I assumed she meant copywriter and confirmed as much by reading a bit of the description. Me. Ma'am, I noticed your previous job title is... Bitchy customer interrupting me. I'd appreciate it if you didn't snoop on my personal information. Me. I apologize, I just noticed a Thai bitchy customer. Please just print my order. Me. With malicious compliance kicking in. Okay. I printed the entire stack of 50 resumes and was squaring them up when I noticed Lorem Ipsum Dolor Sit Emet. I don't know. In the last paragraph on the page. At this point, I had to tell her, right? As I'm walking over to the counter to show her the missed filler text, she yells, Will you please not crimp the pages? I need to hand those out. So I make it to the counter, gently placing her copies in a bag and rang her out. She did come back later to complain, but my manager assured her that we don't make it a practice to proofread customers' documents as that's their responsibility. Okay, I might be a little slow here, but there's actual paper for just resumes? Like I know there's card stock, cover stock, printer paper of different qualities and weights, but... I always just did my resumes on regular printer paper, copy paper. Who knew? Since when is it the job of the guy behind the counter to proofread your stuff? Now, if they offer that as a service and you want to pay for it, great. Go ahead and proofread my stuff. They were being nice. They just happened to notice a couple typos and we're going to point them out just, you know, to be nice and give you a chance to correct anything before you start paying for 50 copies. And, uh, yeah, you just wanted to be a bitchy troll. So now you get treated like one. Congrats. Can't talk to him. He's dead. X's dad passed. He was a good guy. All about family and making sure they were comfortable. There were a few of these things, but the one for Dyson Care stands out. Small direct debit to cover the vacuum cleaner. Wanted to cancel it after he passed. Agent. We can't cancel the account without speaking to the account holder. My ex says, you can't, he's dead. The agent says, well, we can't cancel the account without speaking to the account holder. My ex says, you can't, he's dead. Do you want a copy of the death certificate? Agent, we can't receive that here and I can't close the account without speaking to the account holder. And then we hang up. Cancel direct debit specifically before the account is closed by the bank so they get notified. 
They write a letter to him complaining he owes them money and will have to pay extra to continue his coverage. He can't. He's dead. Edit. This was years ago. No real advice is needed. We'll happily accept suggestions of possible afterlife communication methods. Ouija board or seance, it's just funny, but it's a true story. Why is it customer service can't get that in their heads? I know they have a little script that they have to follow at most companies. There are very few customer service representatives who are actually able to do anything that goes off script. The only thing would be maybe kicking you up to a supervisor of some sort. If I was that customer service rep, I would have at least sort of played along and said, listen, I understand what you're saying, but here's what I got. Here's what I'm allowed to say. Would you like a supervisor? <laughs> but yeah, good luck getting your money now. Won't change my name? Add my brother then. A while back I had legally changed my first name and was going through the very painful process of updating my details with every company. One I dealt with refused to accept that I would have changed my first name and were generally painful to deal with. Even offering to send certified copies of everything wasn't suitable. They insisted that it was just not possible to update their records. So I called up and asked if I could add a joint account holder. They said yes and I asked to add my brother in quotes who shared my surname but a different first name. Gave them my mobile and email for the contact details and his date of birth as my own. The lady on the phone was happy to oblige and didn't even question that all the other details match. She asked if there was anything else she could do to help me before I went and asked to take me off the account under my old name so that it would only be my brother's name. Call was done and dusted in less than 10 minutes and was the easiest changeover process ever. <laughs> even made me consider doing that for other companies where I could. So... You are you. You have proof that you are you. You have proof that you changed your name. Still you, but new name. And they couldn't accept that. But you can add your brother with just details that you're telling them, not even showing them, and that's okay. I I don't understand. I don't know of any software on any account, like be it banks, stores, whatever, where they can't update customer information. That's just dumb. I did an online course to fly as a passenger in an F-18. So for background, I'm in the Army. Won't disclose which. What kind of training, son? Army training, sir! Army training, sir! And I'm a tank gunner. Every year we have to do online courses on certain subjects such as CBRN, conduct after capture, weapons handling, etc. Sometimes they say on your spare time you will do online courses at home that don't count for anything. And most of the time, the chain of command usually loses all of them and you end up reprinting and resending all of the certificates probably around three times. Well, one day, my morale was so low. I was recently denied a posting so my wife could be closer to her doctors so she can get her open heart surgery. I was basically told, it's her fault she moved up here. Pissed off and not giving an F, I try to think of ways to royally peeve off my superiors and being untouchable by remedial actions. I browsed a subreddit on my military filled with edgelords. I was looking to vent and just find ways to get them back, and then I see interesting courses to boost my career. I look at the comments, and most of them have some good advice on certain courses to take. One, however, was a course that qualified you to fly as a passenger in my country's version of the F-18. Maniacal laughing incoming. I see the course on the website and immediately start going through all the slides and taking down notes on the subject material. I failed to test the first time around, but on the second, I nailed that stuff. I then do a whole bunch of BS padding courses so they have to sort out what I just gave them. I get all my papers and hand it in directly to my immediate supervisor. I walk out laughing until I hear, hey, what's this one? And lo and behold, it's that course. I give this huge crap-eating grin and my sergeant looks at the course certificate and back to me and says, you know that course costed us $2,000? <laughs> Still with my grin, I looked at him and said I was told to do online courses on my spare time. I wasn't given specifics. He then tried the whole day to get me into stuff with our commander, and they couldn't touch me since I followed an order. Now I'm known as the only tanker in my country with this course and qualification. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, if it's a requirement to take them, then why are they busting your chops? What do they care if it's in your spare time? I mean, there's got to be some kind of guideline somewhere that says... You know, it must be in this field or that field or something that helps in your particular career path or one that you're going to maybe. I don't know. In most countries, there's some kind of guidelines. Now, there's always a loophole. Don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, that was perfect, man. Love that. I'd love to fly in an F-18. 
don't help any more clients. A pandemic story. I work in a distribution job, but we used to allow clients to come in and pick out what they want, walk around the warehouse and do their own shopping. It got in the way of colleagues trying to pick orders, but when do managers care? Key phrase is used to. When the pandemic happened, we changed things. Clients couldn't come in. Instead, they were to wait near the entrance and ring a bell for assistance. The idea was that whoever was available would go over, take their order, pick it, pack it, and send them on their way. The orders from the manager were that everyone was to help walk in clients. Everyone. They did not. Almost all the time it was me or one or two of the others. Usually me though. My particular role in that place was to make sure that all the orders were picked correctly, packed securely, and actually sent out. That last part wasn't my job, I just did it to help. If I don't do my part, the company makes no money. One very busy day, there's a queue out the door and it's very busy for everyone. The manager decided quickly to get everyone picking orders, even telesales, reception, and himself. Who helps clients? Only me. I try to stay on top of my job, but with many people dumping orders for me to sort out and no one helping clients, it's hard. I ask the manager for help, point out I'm alone on my job and the client desk. I'll sort it out, don't worry, I'll sort it. He does nothing, no help for little old me, so I choose to abandon my job completely to focus on the clients that are now lined up out the door. An hour passes, things are a mess. Manager approaches whilst I'm talking to a client. What the hell are you doing? Why is there so much still to be sent out? Excuse me, I say to the client. There's a line out the door. You said you would do something, but you haven't done anything. Somebody has to help the clients, and I'm the only one willing. That's what the hell I'm doing. He goes quiet for a minute, seeing the line of clients for the first time. This line of clients is not hidden away where they can't be noticed. The line's blocking things up outside. Don't help any more clients. I'll do that. Just do your job. My job? Just my job? Happy to. The thing about everything I do, it's mostly extras to help out. I don't need to make sure the orders get sent. It's not my job. Simply no one else will do it though. So I start checking orders, packing them, making sure the stock goes through the system is being sold. Then I leave everything for someone else to send out. To notify the carrier service we use, to make sure everything's taken, all the while I'm taking my time to just do my job. Manager helps clients himself. Yeah, he doesn't have a clue how the computer system works either, so he spends half an hour per client. The day ends. He doesn't say anything to me. The following week, I have a new person working with me to help make sure things get done. I never started helping clients or doing extras again. He had to learn how to do that himself. Good for you, OP. You know, it's very difficult to get most managers or supervisors to understand that, you know, just because they bark things doesn't mean they know how things actually work in the place where they're managing. It's, it's amazing. When I worked in a cabinet shop, the guy that ran the cabinet shop, he was the shop supervisor, I guess you could call him, little troll. Anyway, we'd be getting in new materials and you'd have to unload the truck by hand. You, you know, the, the truck's not going to just pull up and dump it on the ground like framing materials. You have to actually hand pick it off. Um, this was rough sawn lumber, so it all went in a stack and then we would spend a couple hours planing it down to basic thicknesses that we would normally use then we could stack it on the racks in categories, cherry, oak, maple, whatever. And that way it was all ready to go to be cut for size for whatever project we were working on. And one day the truck came in and, you know, it was like six or eight of us in the shop working besides him. And uh, we usually would all hit it at once. And then a couple guys after the truck was unloaded would go and plane the materials down and everybody else would go back to their jobs. Well, we all went out the door and he came out and started yelling at everybody. Well, my job was very specific. I was an assembler and I was a sander at that time. So basically I would sand the materials and I would put them together, make the face frames for the cabinets, build the boxes for the cabinets, put the face frames on the boxes, you know, all that stuff. Well, nowhere in my job description when I got hired on did it say I had to unload the truck or sweep the shop or whatever. I would do those things to help out. We all did. It made things run so much smoother. And uh, when he yelled for me to get back and only do my job, yeah, you can bet that's all I did. And if he didn't have anything prepped for me to, you know, build or assemble or sand, then guess which fat guy with a beard stood around? This guy. Alcohol-free alcohol. All right. This is a short one. Back in the 90s, I was in a club with my social circle. Now, I'm a complete lightweight when it comes to drinking, so I was often the designated driver in our group. That is, the guy who would not be drinking that night so he could drive everyone else home. 
On this particular night, it was dollar pots and spirits. A pot being a small beer and spirits meaning cheap watered down spirits with a mixer, i.e. bourbon and coke. As I was not drinking alcohol that night, I walked up to the bar and asked for a coke with ice. Bartender says $3. I said, but it's a dollar pots and spirits tonight. And she said, no, that's only pots and spirits. I then pointed out that I was the designated driver and surely she understood that the post-mixed coke was cheaper to pour anyway. Nope, wouldn't budge. I then asked for a bourbon and coke with no bourbon. She says, no worries, pours my drink and charges me a dollar. <laughs> I stared at her and she legitimately didn't seem to notice anything wrong with the interaction. Modern problems require modern solutions. <laughs> this is just dumb. Oh, yes, the Coke is cheaper. <laughs> I just don't understand, man. People are stupid. So I know it's different every place, but if we had somebody that we knew was a designated driver and they really weren't drinking, like they weren't coming up and, you know, sneaking a a bourbon here, a beer there, whatever, we would actually give them the soda for free. We wouldn't charge them. Uh, honestly, that cup of soda didn't really cost us anything in the grand scheme of things. And A, it's a nice thing to do to make sure that the drunkies get home in one piece. And B, we wouldn't then be held legally liable because they have a designated driver. Even if you don't overserve somebody and they get in a car and have a wreck, it could still come back on the bar and the server, the bartender. So, yeah. I don't know. Gave him the price he wanted. I used to work in a jewelry store. One of the large chains that is slowly dying due to us dastardly millennials not buying expensive shiny rocks. Every year there was a tax free weekend sale. Sales tax was 8.25% at the time. And my manager would just offer an even 10% off. Since it was a little more off for the customer. And for the sales reps, the 10% discount was its own easy to click button in our point of sale instead of manually putting in 8.25% every time. Win-win for everybody. Until Mr. Tax Free walks in. Everything's going smoothly. He picks out a nice ring and we go to ring him up. He asks about us taking off the tax to save him some money. We tell him we're doing 10% off instead of tax free. He begins to angrily demand his tax free discount. My manager was quickly like, give the man what he wants. So instead of taking 10% off his purchase, we take 8.25% off. He walked out very satisfied with himself and never returned. I don't know if he ever realized 8.25 is less than 10. Edit. For those unfamiliar with Texas shenanigans, the sales signs said 10% off. Other businesses were doing actual tax-free sales for stuff like school supplies. Other businesses like jewelry stores piggyback from the publicity of actual tax-free sales to do their own sales. This man saw the 10% off. We attempted to explain the difference and he wasn't having it until we lowered the 10% off to 8.25%. That guy's a genius. And even if, you know, it caught you off guard, you weren't thinking about the fact that, you know, 10% is higher than 8.25% tax rate. Um, you know, when the guy's standing there telling you, and I'm sure this person explained it, but uh, yeah, I mean, slow down for a second. It's sort of like when somebody asks a manager, hey, could you put that in writing for me? That should immediately cause that manager to just stop in his tracks and replay everything in his mind. Wait a minute. Did I screw something up? Like, make sure if you're going to put something in writing that it's actually right. You know, I just noticed I look like an Oompa Loompa here. I must have put my saturation on my color up too high. And uh, yeah, I'm not sunburn or anything, I promise. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories today. And if you did, would you do me a favor? Would you click like on this video? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click that bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy with the beard and weird colors telling you stories. See ya.